Section 2.5 conductors, 2.5.1, basic properties of conductors. So um, there's basically two types of matter out there um, when you're thinking of electrostatic fields. There's insulators and there's conductors. And the way to think about these um, is to imagine that in insulators you have basically some positive charge and it's bound like with the spring to a negative charge. So you can stretch that spring and move it and they tend to like to be sitting on top of each other like this, like this, but you know, you could stretch it, but it's not gonna go very far, okay? Whereas conductors are more like this. You have a network of positive charges and then the negative charges, they can just do whatever they want. So they just wander and, and they can hang out next to a positive charge, but they can move around freely. They're not bound to the, um, the positive charges. Um, so the basic properties, uh, oh, a perfect conductor has unlimited free charge, whereas real conductors don't. At some point, you're gonna overcome uh, the number of free charges available and you'll, you'll start seeing it behave more like an, uh, an insulator than a conductor um, when you have truly massive electric fields. So anyway, um, so points. The point number one is inside a conductor, the E vector is always zero. And why is that? The answer is rather simple. If you had a conductor and you had an electric field, then the charges would be pushed by that electric field until they arrived at a point where they negated, they themselves negated the electric field. And so the electric field is always zero. Okay. In electrostatics, remember, we're not dealing with changing systems. So in electrostatics, if you have an electric field that's been there since forever and a conductor that's been there since forever, the charges will cancel. Um, number two kind of follows from the first one. So the charge density inside the conductor is zero. Why is that? Well, the charge density is, um, let me get the formula right here. I always panic right before I write the equations because I, I fear I'm going to get them wrong. Okay, there we go. The charge density is equal to uh, epsilon naught times the divergence of the electric field. Okay, since the electric field is zero, the charge density is zero. Um, and you can kind of see why that's true. If you had a charge inside producing an electric field, the electric field would have to cancel it out. It would move as well. You know, ultimately the charges end up on the point three surface. Only, the only charge that you're gonna have on a conductor is at the surface, okay? At that mathematical limit um, that we have for integrals and such like that. So um, the other interesting thing is, since the electric field is zero, the potential is also zero inside. This is all inside, by the way. And that's because the potential um, is, um, The gradient of the potential is zero, so the potential, is, potential isn't constant. It's not zero, it's constant inside. So the potential doesn't change. Okay, and point five is that um, at the surface, the electric field has to be perpendicular to surface. Okay, if you had any parallel component to the electric field at the surface of a conductor, then the charges at the surface would move along that parallel component and cancel it out. Um, a good way to think of this is um, the the minute the you basically in classical mechanics things try to minimize energy, and so if you had the the um, the energy to assemble a spherical shell of charge Q, right? 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times 1 half Q squared over R. The energy to assemble a sphere of uniform charge density is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, 3 fifths Q squared over R. So having the charge spread out among the volume of this, the, the conductor it actually has more energy than the minimum charge of putting the, the same charge at the surface. So by putting the charge at the surface, you're really minimizing the energy.